Hey there, interwebs, and welcome back to How Fascinating. We've previously talked all about avocados, but now let's talk about apples. They're the er fruit, base widget of all 100 level economics questions, and occasional vehicle for deadly poison. You see, the poison apple is an old storytelling trope, perhaps most frequently associated with evil stepmothers and dwarven flatmates, but it isn't limited to fiction. You may have heard that their seeds contain cyanide, and that's true, but only for certain definitions of the words cyanide, contain, and true. Apple seeds actually contain a chemical compound known as amygdalin. The name comes from the ancient Greek word for almond, in which it can be found as well, which is coincidentally why everyone in fiction can identify a substance as cyanide by the scent of bitter almonds. It's also found in the pits of stone fruits such as apricots, peaches, and plums, and it's a cyanogenic glycoside, which is smart people speak for a type of molecule which contains cyanide. You needn't worry about swallowing apple seeds, however, because they're covered in a durable outer layer which is resistant to digestion. As I pointed out in my last video about fruit, seeds evolved to be eaten and expelled far away in a pile of fertilizer, so it would be counterproductive for them if anything which swallowed them immediately dropped dead three feet from the tree. This coating doesn't work, though, if you chew the seeds up. The LD50, that's the amount of a substance to constitute a lethal dose in 50% of a test population, of cyanide taken orally is about 1 to 2 milligrams for every kilogram of the person ingesting it. For a 75 kilogram human male, that means the lethal dose is around a tenth of a gram. Apple seeds contain about 700 milligrams of cyanide per kilo, and a single seed weighs about three quarters of a gram, and therefore contains roughly half a milligram of cyanide. This all means it would take around 200 apple seeds, finely chewed, to kill an average human. Deer, which also eat apples, seeds and all, are likely to swallow the seeds whole and be unaffected, but smaller animals such as squirrels, mice, and other rodents like to eat the seeds on their own. A typical gray squirrel weighs around half a kilo, so its lethal dose is around three quarters of a milligram, or one and a half seeds. In brief, large fauna eat the fruit, deposit the seeds, and carry on with their lives, but small fauna which eat the seeds will get sick and perhaps even die. Face it, apples have this whole poisoning thing pretty well figured out. Perhaps this toxic danger could be why risky urban areas and unscrupulous people are sometimes described as seedy. A petulant or disruptive child is described as a bad seed, and if they grow up into rotten adults, they become bad apples. The original bad apple, in fiction at least, may have been the ancient Greek golden apple of discord which was created by Eris, goddess of strife and chaos. She threw it to the Olympians with the inscription to the fairest, which caused Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite to fight over it, eventually resulting in the Trojan War. Acontius also threw an inscribed apple at the feet of his love interest, Chidippe, while she was praying in the temple of Artemis. She read the inscription, I swear by Artemis that I will marry Acontius, out loud, and when you say that in a temple, there's no take backsies. Ironically, Artemis is the goddess of things like chastity and virginity, and her followers usually forswore the company of men. Rough. Hippomenes also gained his wife through apple-based trickery, distracting Atalanta during a foot race by tossing out golden apples. These shouldn't be confused with the golden apples of the Hesperides, which Heracles was sent to retrieve as the eleventh of his ten labors. Well, I say they shouldn't be confused, but there are some who believe that the Garden of the Hesperides was the source of all golden apples in Greek mythology, including Eris's apple of discord. That apple of strife may have also contributed to the biblical connection of original sin with an apple from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the original forbidden fruit. Incidentally, when writing the script, I was trying to come up with the phrase forbidden fruit, but came up with foreboding fruit instead, and now I'm picturing some vorpal coconut of Damocles looming ominously overhead. It's not quite clear what the original forbidden fruit was, though, since the Latin words for apple and evil are both malum, and furthermore, malum didn't just refer to apples specifically. It was the Latin word for all kinds of fruits and nuts. Perhaps something has been lost in translation. Perhaps it's just a monastic pun. All this talk of religion brings us to a Christian missionary by the name of John Chapman, better known as Johnny Appleseed. For the unaware, he was a real historical figure and pioneer who traveled across the Northwest Territory, living a simple existence and planting apple trees. What most people don't know, however, is that the apples of these trees which he planted were never intended to be eaten. This is because apples are what smart people call extremely heterozygous. In layperson's terms, that means the fruit of the offspring are often nothing like the fruit of the parent, so, speaking in terms of quality, it seems the apple really does fall far from the tree. If Chapman wasn't planting apple trees for eating, then what were the apples for? In a word, booze. When most people think of Christianity and alcohol in the context of American history, the two are usually placed on opposing sides, such as the case of the Women's Christian Temperance Union and Prohibition, but in Chapman's day, things were different. Most of his apples were destined to become hard cider, which could be a lifesaver, literally. He predated modern methods of sanitation, and the general advice at the time for how to safely drink water was don't. Instead, the most common drinks were alcoholic, because alcohol sterilizes the beverages even if people didn't understand why or how. Also, people like to drink booze. That means everyone, kids included. 
Back in its heyday, cider was consumed by all age groups, and children were given a weaker, less alcoholic mixture known as ciderkin. So, if Johnny Appleseed was a Christian missionary planting trees for booze, then presumably his evil Mirror Universe equivalent was a satanic teetotaler named Johnny Cyanide, running across the country burning down forests. It's just a good thing Chapman wasn't planting canola instead. We couldn't exactly have an American folk hero called Johnny Rapeseed. No, Chapman limited himself to apples to turn into booze, and it's for this reason that I believe he should be canonized as the patron saint of brewers and alcoholics. Just imagine it. Saint John of Appleseed. Has kind of a ring to it, no? Feel free to disagree in the comments below, but that's all I've got to say on the subject for the week, so I'm ending things here. Until next time, thanks for watching, and have a fascinating day.